everybody, Kim here from Inner Stillness Integrative Wellness Practice. Today's video I want to talk to you about emotional baggage or how we have problems. I want to share this with you because it, I find it to be such an important part of the work that I do. So what I like to explain to people is, you know, from the time that we are born until this present moment, our mind has the ability to record every single thing that's ever happened to us. And from the time that we are born up until the time we're seven years old, our, our brain is learning how to be a brain from those caregivers that, that are so important to us. So we're completely dependent, especially in the first 12 months of our life, on the caregivers that, that are in our life. And so we are downloading, for lack of a better way of saying it, every emotion, every feeling, every stress, every joy, every frustration that both our caregivers, whether it be one caregiver or two caregivers, whether it's our grandparents, it really doesn't matter whoever is taking care of us. We are downloading that information. The part of the brain that downloads that information is called the amygdala and it's it's hidden in the hippocampus which is the emotional brain. It's two little organs called amygdala and they sit deep in your brain and they record everything. The good, the bad, the indifferent. And the way the brain takes the information in is in pictures and sounds and feelings and thoughts and sensations. So it, it records everything based on that. I like to talk about our emotional baggage usually comes from as we're looking up at these two beautiful people or one beautiful person that is raising us it's almost as if they're giving us their backpack so everything they've experienced all all everything that's been handed down to them their values their beliefs um, their fears their anxieties their happiness their jokes is in this backpack so you put on one backpack from your one parent and then you put on the other backpack from the other parent and you walk around with those backpacks on you've modeled from your parents and that becomes your map of your world. So the map is not the territory because as we know we grow up and as we grow up we start to form our own perceptions and our own thoughts and ideas about what's going on in the world and we very very conveniently forget about mom and dad and the two backpacks because we've been carrying those two backpacks for so long we've forgotten all about them. They're just there and it's just part of my life and, and I don't even notice. It's kind of like, and, and this is how I explain it to people, if you can imagine if I took the very first Atari computer that came out in the 70s, and I remember my mom working on this, and I tried to do this video on that particular computer, I'd struggle quite, quite a deal because that operating system would not be able to handle the technology of today. But in lots of ways, that's what we do. We've taken all of our, our, our values and beliefs and you know, fears and doubts and judgments and the whole nine yards, all of our perceptions, all of the fears, and we've just not updated them at all. We've gone on, we think we've formed our own opinions, but deep in our subconscious mind, all of these things are sitting there just waiting. And this amygdala is a bit like a filing cabinet. So it's, it's filed everything based on your emotional reaction at the time that it happened. So if it was traumatic, it's got a big red flag on it. So the next time, so we'll use a car accident for example. I was in a car accident when I was younger. So every single time for many years, we would be in a situation where a car was traveling a certain speed or going around the type of corner or taking that corner a certain way. My heart would start pounding because that part of my brain has pulled up the, the red flag that's gone, oh no, oh no, the situation's right for a car accident, and my body's gone into fight, flight, or freeze. And I'm now responding from that place. It's also kind of like when you learn to tie your shoes when you were younger. At first it was very, very difficult, and you so many things you had to remember. Then before you knew it, you were tying your shoes and you weren't even thinking about it. Today, I bet you tie your shoes, you don't think about it at all, because it's become an unconscious program like so many of the programs that we picked up in our childhood. The modality that I work in, what we do is we help take the unproductive old patterns and beliefs and values that no longer serve you, take the emotions from them offline and re-imprint new, more productive ways of holding this circumstance in your mind. And when you do that, that amygdala, it starts searching to see, uh-oh, is there any danger, is there any danger, and it can't find any danger. So you don't have the, the reaction. 
it's one of the reasons that I fell in love with what I do. It, it was the missing piece for me when I found this. I had been working on myself for almost 15 years, the very first time I was told about this. And I had seen every psychologist and therapist on the planet and no one explained to me that in my unconscious mind I was holding all these fears. I really hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening. Bye.